In the second reading of today from the letter to the Ecticians, we are given an insight into what it means to partake of the spiritual bread which Jesus gives. The physical bread satisfies the physical hunger, but the spiritual bread satisfies the hunger of our hearts and of our spirit. And it is this spiritual bread which enables us, as the letter to the Ephesians invites us to be, those who will not grieve the Holy Spirit. And not grieving the Holy Spirit will mean that I am kind to others, that I am loving with others, that I am generous with others, and that I am willing to spend myself in their service. The letter to the Ephesians shows very clearly in the, in the reading of today what it means to be a spiritual minded person, what it means to have partaken of the Eucharistic law. In the first reading of today, Elisha is told to have physical bread which will allow him to move, but that physical bread is also a bread which is spiritual because while Elijah is filled physically, he moves forward in the spirit of the Lord. In the gospel text of today, Jesus knows that there are some who follow him only because he has fed them physically and it is those whom he addresses today. In our own lives, our relationship with God is often one of barter exchange. We want God to do us favors and we are very happy when God does us those favors. We want a particular thing to be accomplished and when the thing is accomplished, we are willing to thank God, we are willing to sing God's praises. However, we are fair weather friends. When things do not go the way we plan, when things do not happen according to how we want them to happen, then it is not so easy to continue to praise God, to continue to thank God. And so the gospel text of today is inviting us to change this perspective, to change our relationship with God. If our relationship with God continues to be of a God who is a grocer, and to whom we will go only when we need something, to whom we offer thanks only after we have received what we asked for, then our relationship will remain at that level. It will remain on the level of being satisfied only physically. However, if as Jesus has shown, God is love. If as Jesus has shown God loves unconditionally, then our whole relationship with God will change if we accept this. Then you will be able to find God in every single situation. You will be able to find God when things go exactly as we plan, but you will be able to find God even more when things do not go as we have planned because we know that God will work for our good, that God will never do anything that is to our detriment, that God will do whatever God does for God's glory and for the good of the universe. During these last months and year and a half now, we have been fighting against this COVID-19 pandemic. We have been trying and trying to find ways and means in which we can respond. And while we succeed in some ways, we fail in other ways. There have been explanations given to us as to how this originated. Some are theories. There is some truth in some, but really the real truth is still unknown. The vaccine provides respite to some. It provides comfort to some, but there are many millions who have still not received that vaccine and there are some who have reacted negatively to the vaccine. And yet, in all of this, 
To find that God is working for our good is not easy. But this is the challenge of these times. We need to realize that God is with us. We need to realize that God is for us because this is the God whom Jesus proclaimed our God. It's not a God up in the heavens. Our God is not a God up in the skies. Our God is not a God who has created the world and left it to its own design. Our God is present at every moment. If only we open our eyes to see, our ears to hear and our heart to experience. However, if we focus like the people at the time of Jesus did merely on our needs and our physical needs being met and fulfilled and if we stop at that then it's not likely that we will find God. However, if like the letter to the Ephesians asks us to do, if we do not grieve the spirit but believe that the spirit of God is working in our lives and the lives of others, then we will find God in all things and we will find all things in God. When you open your heart to the promptings of God's spirit so that you will find God everywhere and you will find everywhere 